you kind of hit everything. I don't even know why we have to do a podcast at this point. <laughs> Welcome to Amore Philly Union, the podcast where we talk about how the union, from oldest to the youngest, just love to show other teams that a 2-0 lead against the union is just an invitation for this their disappointment. <laughs> we are your hosts. I'm E. I'm C. And I'm Paul. Okay, let me scroll up real quick to the top of my notes. Uh, <laughs> housekeeping. Uh, housekeeping. All right, so... um. We're, we're, we're chugging away here on a Help Us Help the You Challenge uh, to that 3,000 download goal. Uh, last week was a decent week. Uh, we, we picked up 46 more downloads. Um, so we're just a little over 2,200 downloads, and uh, we are, we're, we're getting there. Um, I think we're still on good pace here to maybe get there by August. We'll see. Maybe September. Yeah, in the meantime, if you want to um, join in the love and, and throw some love towards the philadelphia union foundation you can do that just uh go to www.philadelphiaunionfoundation.org and there's a nice big donate button right there you can click on and tell them that a more philly union sent you okay well let's uh let's get into the game this past week um the, the union traveled to dc to face off against uh um dc united um I'm sorry, Ben Teke's. There we go. I was, I was waiting for someone to jump in on that one. <laughs> ben Teke's DC United. Um, and they, I guess, spoiler, right? They started to turn things around, right? The union coming off those two back-to-back losses, um, which is, you know, fairly painful. Uh, we didn't lose, but we didn't win. Uh, it was a 2-2, 2-2 draw. Um, draw that felt like a win. It was a draw that felt like a win. Um yeah, it was kind of a, a messy game weather-wise because it was kind of. Uh, I think they're saying it was pretty wet out there, right? You saw the yeah. the ball yeah. rolling around with the rooster tail of water coming off of it. Yeah, it was um, rough weather Saturday. Which I would argue we tend to do better than in that um, than not. Um, which I like to think that had the union just played out that absolutely torrentially saturated game against Seattle when we were first scheduled to play, uh, we would have won. <laughs> um, but yeah. The stadium That's... would have been closed so, that, so they could redo the pitch, but <laughs> seriously, it would have destroyed it. I couldn't tell with the stadium at the uh, DC plays in if that was grass or turf. Yeah. Good point. I thought it was grass, but every now and then they would get a picture of a guy on the ground and they yep. had pieces of stuff hanging on their legs. And That's I was like, true. That's not normal on grass, uh, so I couldn't tell if it was some sort of a, you know, a, a, a more natural looking turf of some sort because it didn't have that neon green that the yeah. uh, Seattle has. Yes, right. Um, but it also just didn't quite look completely like grass. It, I, maybe it's something better. Bedoya ran the whole game, so that's something. Yeah, man. Absolutely, take it. I, I thought the same thing too, Paul. I kept going back and forth watching the game. Like, yeah, that's turf. No, is that turf? Maybe it's grass. No, nah, that's turf. No, I think it might be grass. I, I can't tell. So if it's turf, it's pretty nice turf, I guess. Well, um, in terms of lineups, I guess there's a couple things of note here. Uh, Paul, as you already alluded to, uh, Bedoya started. And I think he did he play the whole 90? Yeah, he, he did. did, I believe. But also of note, uh, Zemla starting in net. Uh, Blake mm-hmm. is still injured, uh, dealing with, I guess, whatever that knee issue is. Um, yeah, it was scary how much water you said they took off. Uh, you know, liquid you said that they took off of them, mm-hmm. I think, Christy, last mm-hmm. week. Yeah, it doesn't sound like that's going to just heal right up. So. so it looks like the union, uh, according to the stat reports here, it was a 4-4-2 lineup. Uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to note here, at least for me, was uh, Leon Flock was back starting, um, which is nice to see. They said it was his first game this year. Is that true? It was definitely the first, at least by my memory, it was his first time playing for the Union this season. Yeah. I I could have sworn he was in early on, but maybe it was just, um, you know, preseason training, and I'm getting yeah. confused. Yeah. I don't remember. So, but it was I, good to see him back out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, defense wise, also, uh, Elliot was not in. Um, 
uh, low was start was in his in his spot. The partial um, triangle of death was in with uh, Gazdog and Kranz up front. Uh, or would I guess be summoned later in the game uh, yes. to complete the uh, the trifecta there, um, or the triad is probably the better word for it. Yeah, but, but they the... tried running that flatter four four two with uh, McLean, Bedoya, Flock, and Sullivan in the midfield instead of instead of you know Martinez or Bueno as a defensive midfielder and Gajdog in the attacking midfielder role. I don't know. It didn't seem to work. Yeah, the game <laughs> did not get off to a good start. Um, I mean, the the DC gets their first goal in the ninth minute, and I don't know about you guys. I was starting to feel like the old Union days were starting to <laughs> collect upon the horizon for a revisit. <laughs> you know, um, you know, and then they DC gets that second goal uh, a little bit later. Yeah, about thirty. 30th minute or so. And I was like, oh, no. Because up to that point, DC, uh, and I think we heard the announcers even saying this, they were they were running this game. They um, really were. Yeah, I felt like, oh, that's what it was. I remember, oh, yeah, first of all, Shep Messing was one of the, the commentators, um, which he's a classic MLS guy. Um, I still remember uh, watching... I may, they might have been Metro Stars at the time. No, maybe they were Red Bulls. But the whole Danny Sapero long range uh, set piece goal uh, that it, you know it's kind of his his legacy. But I always think of that free kick whenever I hear Shep Messing talk. But anyway, but I remember Shep Messing saying um, the Union are playing reactive soccer and not active soccer, and I, that's I think that was an accurate description. It was definitely kept waiting for the Union to take control, even yeah. if. It wasn't through possession and just start bossing DC around and remind yeah. them that, you know, the union are one of the best teams in this league. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it was the formation or the players or, you know, the instructions, but it just felt like DC had no trouble getting the ball up into the union section of the field, um, trying to make themselves dangerous. And yeah. you know, in a lot of ways, I think the union were lucky that they only gave up two. Yep. In this game, hundred percent. You know, much less in the first half. Yeah, they looked cowed just getting off the bus to me. Yeah, like, like when they showed the initial shots, I, they all. I mean, I, I guess you know, game faces and all that, but you know, uh, DC was walking in, signing autographs with their their fits and the whole thing, and these guys getting off the bus just looked like they were heading to the Hunger Games, something like that. <laughs> it wasn't good. But at least this this week it was you know, like you said in the opening, the two nothing lead is the, uh, is is a tough one to hold against the Union. It's a yeah. tough one to hold in soccer. And this week, you know, one of the main differences is the Union actually got a goal in the first half yeah. off what was uh, you know it's clearly a a, a a set piece that they worked on. Yeah, with uh you know Will Wagner putting the ball into play from a distance, it wasn't close enough for an actual shot. Yeah. And Bedoya making a near post run into open space on his own and one touching it over the keeper uh, mm -hmm. to beat him for the first goal. And then um, in the midst of that play, it looked like one of the DC players clattered or stepped yeah. on the keeper. Yeah, they yeah. clattered into or stepped on the keeper, yeah. uh, which put him down for a little while, but he was able to continue playing. Yeah. But it was good to see Bedoya make that run. It was good yeah. to see Wagner find him. It was a real nice finish from Bedoya. Um, yeah. once again, Bedoya will run the entire game, whether yeah. he's as fast as everybody else on the field, doesn't make much of a difference when yeah. a man runs as long as he does, he's he covers a lots of ground. Funny you should say that because I, I had a very much a, a love hate relationship with Shed Messing during this whole game. Um, there was a lot of talking back to the television, uh, on my part. And you mean you um, didn't like him calling him Semmel? Oh, don't get me started on the name pronunciation. There was so much. He he actually at one point said Godzog, which I think Godzog, God, which is kind of awesome. Yeah, but also, um, but yeah. So um, he did say about Ali that um, anybody who wrote him off as too old and not effective was missing the point and the boat entirely. Yeah. So I mean that's my paraphrasing of what he said, but um, yeah. I, I 
appreciated that. Yeah, I remember when he said that. It was the, I think your reaction and response was, oh, okay, shut messing, you know, you're, you're, you're back in my good graces now. Two minutes, minutes graces. later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two minutes later, we had words again, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So that anyway. free kick, too, it felt kind of Philly special ish, special, oh, like, because it was just kind of like, all right, they're setting up. And then all of a sudden, Kai just quickly kicks the ball and says, worm burner right down the field. And Allie's running right after it. And it, the, the look on DC's team was kind of like, sorry, the look on Ben Teke's DC United uh, <laughs> just looked very like, wait, 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 we're not ready. It's like, you know, always expect it like playground timeout, not fair. We didn't, we weren't ready. It's like, no, um, yeah. which is uh, definitely the way to kind of get the the comeback started. And uh, it's always great seeing Bodoya score because he just looks just freaking pumped, you know, and uh, Chris, I think he knows he kind of ran off to the uh not he ran to wherever yeah. wherever they had the, s- the supporters seated um definitely was you know was like you know doing that come on yeah. come on with you kind of thing yeah. and then he was pointing at somebody in the sidelines i can only assume it was jim Curtin, yeah. um you know and doing some some pumped up kind of chatter um but yeah so he was definitely trying to 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 uh get everybody back in it so i did hear that this that the the philly union supporter section was sold out for this game nice. uh, good job yeah guys. there's there's uh there's i-95 games the, it's a good um, one to make the trip for i think it, yeah. yeah close enough you can get back and forth without i mean obviously if especially if you're taking one of the bus trips down there it's mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to do but uh have, have you ever been to audi field i've been to i haven't been to audi field i've been to two dc united games at rfk yeah, yeah, one before the union were around, and one after. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's it, it's it's you know it's it's an it's an experience. Um, I'm thinking maybe next year, maybe trying to organize take Nate down for one of those games mm-hmm. that might be fun to do. Yeah, yeah, because I was if trying with the sons of Ben. Yeah, absolutely, he'd love that. Yeah, I um, sorry to mean to interrupt. I I um couldn't remember if eric had been i knew i hadn't but uh we we went to rfk years ago too before there was a union but um which was a not fun stadium at all no, yeah um just, just like that that old uh giant stadium architecture where it's literally this bowl that just makes sure the air does not escape no and it's i call just... it the 70s overhang too because yeah. it's so like low that you actually kind of feel like you are watching it on tv because yeah. all you get is this <laughs> rectangular View, field of of, view yeah so anyway but apparently audi field is nicer and from mm-hmm. what i did with my quick google search it does look like they actually have actual grass on the field so that's real grass huh yeah um we'll see yeah i don't know if they've replaced it since they first opened it or not but getting back to this game then uh it definitely seemed like whatever curtain said at halftime got the boys fired up for the yeah. second half they, they look more themselves in the second half for sure. Still looking forward to us being a two half team, but yeah, we'll get yeah. there. What's well, interesting too, the first half, we got three, uh, three yellow cards in that first half. Um, Block, Low, and um, Carranza, right? Which is not very mm-hmm. typical. Carranza is not really a yellow or a card, card magnet. Um, but in the second half, I think um, Sullivan came out and Aurora came in. And uh, Flock came out and Martinez went in, yep. mm-hmm. um, which is also curious. I wonder why Martinez didn't start. I don't know. Have you guys heard anything if, like no. injury or anything or just just. No, I noticed his leg was like heavily taped with that yeah. sort of supportive tape. But I don't know if that's just something he does. I know the I past couple games, he... too. Right. He had some like holding his leg. Kind yeah, of he issues. came yeah. off of a previous game at yeah. one point mm-hmm. later in the game. Yeah. So maybe that's why they wanted to play him, but only play him for part of this game. Mm-hmm. So let's get to the highlight real moment. Um, Seriously, this it, is absurd. It was definitely, a, a, as Christy pointed out, it was it was a, a game of two different halves. I think it's like one and a half halves, because I think Ali got us started before the half. Um, and then the momentum was definitely shifting in the game. And... God, like so, it was just what seventy ninth minute. Well, before uh, even before we yeah. got there, um, you know, the, there was the Carranza free kick in the first half, 
where where, where McGlynn did that sort of sort of pass uh that's quick restart retouch mm-hmm. um and Carranza kind of ran into him a bit but put it off the crossbar so it definitely yeah seems to be yeah him ready to ready to get into it but yes let's talk about the second half goal this was amazing so is the McGlynn goal um it was very uh I think in my notes I'd written it was very Glesness esque yes um, that's what I thought as well you know he was outside I mean he was probably like almost an equal distance outside of the 18 yard box. And maybe he was probably around 30 yards out. I don't know. And he just wound up and took this shot and it from the right side of the field, it went curved up and went into the upper left-hand corner. And there was no way um, Bono, right? Or Bono. Is that the, I'm going to call him Bono. Um, Yeah. Go ahead. um, It's fine. It was a Saturday, bloody Saturday. Uh, oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> well, he still hadn't found what he was looking for. And anyway, the, the ball went into the net. And it was an absolutely... Uh, I apologize to my podcast mates and everybody listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, you 2 is it's considered a dad band now, so I think that's officially a, a dad joke. <laughs> yeah, no, no better way to totally undercut... <laughs> talking about anyway this so goal. mcglynn yeah somebody else god love this. him i have to say i i felt good for him um not only because it was a great goal but i feel like he has been denied a lot this season or tried things that didn't work or you know i felt like he was it, 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 having a having a rough time <laughs> broadly speaking i'm sure he scored something i'm sure somebody could point something out but it just felt like the the from what my memory of him was like he wasn't the hot new thing anymore um and that's you know can be a hard place to be so i was happy for him um as i wrote in my notes good for the kid mm. um but more importantly our friend shep as he put it it was a dirty nasty goal <laughs> <laughs> a good lasso for sure <laughs> i had to write that down because it was so great Dirty, so, nasty and, goal. Yeah. So just talking about McGlynn, I, you know, Sullivan has been getting a lot of attention this yeah. year because he's really stepped up his sure. game and really shined. I almost feel like McGlynn has, you know, he got that last year. Yeah. And then this year he's kind of channeling a lot of Gajdag and Bedoya in that he's like, I've been here before. This isn't a surprise. I can do all of these things. So I'm just playing in an understated manner and still doing all those amazing things. And, oh, yeah, if, if people don't recognize it, I'm still pretty w- darn wonderful out here. Yeah. Um, so here, let me remind you of how cool I can be. <laughs> and then sh- I'm going to just slide on my knees. And we're going to go back and we're going to try to do it again. And I, I, I've i been impressed with him. He's, he, yeah. you know, he, he's, he's showing confidence, but a quiet yeah. kind of confidence. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good description, Paul. The Gazdag like um, presence on the field, because like you know, Gazdag setting the record for you know most goals for the Union. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. I guess so. I mean, I know he had a big run there with all of his PKs, and you know that's a you know the whole asterisk conversation. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like like Gazdag. He just quietly keeps working in the background, and then it's when you kind of reflect on like, wow, okay, yeah, they do do a lot. Yeah. And that left foot of his is is murder, yeah. whether with a pass or with a with a shot. Yeah. And with a team playing as defensive as DC was, you're going to get those opportunities when you're 20, 25, 30 yards out. Mm-hmm. Um, and McLean's certainly going to let them know if you give the wrong person on the union's team an opportunity to shoot, they can make you make him make you uh, wish they had it. You know. It was that that was a you know a wonder goal there and you know definitely got going to be considered for goal of the week if yeah. not goal of the year from yeah. that far out that pretty pretty hit and into the target that he hit was amazing, dirty and nasty, dirty and nasty. <laughs> That's going to be his new nickname. So with the game ending two two, did you feel that was a that was a 2-2 draw that felt like a win or 2-2 draw that felt like a draw or 2-2 draw that felt like a loss. I mean, anytime you come back from 2-0 and tie it, 
it yeah. feels like a you know a two two yeah. a draw that feels like a win. Yeah. At the same time, I mean, Carranza put it off the crossbar. Harry right. headed it right back to the keeper. Right. You know, the Union had additional opportunities yeah. to score. But you could also look at it from the other side. Like, there's no reason that DC shouldn't have been up three or four to nothing yeah. before the Union's first yeah. goal. Right. They uh, could have easily been. Harriel, um, it was around the 70th minute. He had a, a nice save to sort of back up. Oh, uh, yeah, Sama. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, um, you know, Kranz actually had, a, I mean, there was that, you're right off the crossbar, but he had a couple of shots that were so close. It mm-hmm. just felt like he was denied yeah. a few times. So, um, you know, just like any game, it could have gone um, a multitude of ways, but at least there's that and just not nothing. I mean, the very beginning, they really looked out outmatched. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I was glad to see them come up uh, to speed as much as they did. I would agree with that. I think that's pretty my pretty much my feelings from the game as well, where it was, yes, one of the one one team or the other could have won, but I'm grateful to have left with a with a draw. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and kudos to Harry with that uh deflecting the ball out and going in the net with his head. Yep. Um so Love him. under under uh praised sometimes, I think Harry. Yeah. Okay, so Did with I... that two two draw, um the union have kind of stemmed the bleeding a little bit, I think, with respect to those two losses in a row. Um and they've uh maintained a, a modest uh, standing in the table, and we are currently in eighth place. McGlynn did get selected for uh, MLS team of the match day. A bench. A I bench. Know, maybe, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, with a goal uh, like that, he only earned a spot on the bench. Go figure. So what were the other goals like in the, around the league that that goal only warranted a bench ranking? I don't uh, know. I'm not sure how they come up with that. Maybe his name's still not popular enough. Yeah, maybe. It, 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 it begins with an M, but that's where, it, that's where <laughs> the reference and similarity ends. So in Union roster news, a uh, couple of, uh, couple of uh, announcements. Uh, Andrew Rick, uh, goalkeeper, backup goalkeeper, the fourth, backup, fourth keeper on the Union 30-person roster, go figure, uh, <laughs> was signed to a homegrown contract uh just to make sure we have the proper amount proper backups uh but ernst tanner i believe actually had a quote about him just being saying something along the lines of they're really impressed with andrew's development as a goalkeeper and you know they see great things for him in the future yes he'll he'll be behind oliver he'll be behind andre um but you know there's they're they're hoping for him to continue his development he's young He's, you know, like I said, out of uh, I think he's out of the academy and he's a homegrown, so that that leaves a lot. But the bigger news on the roster moves is that while the union haven't officially put out a statement to the effect, it's being widely reported that Kevin Sullivan has been signed to mm-hmm. a contract with the union. Um, basically, for that, he'll be a part of the union's group for the next four years until he turns 18. And then there's an agreed transfer to Man City. City. And uh, I'm sure that there's performance. Uh, you know, if he reaches certain performance yeah. goals, that'll change the total amount of the transfer. Yeah. I'm sure that there's a structured transfer agreement there, but. Yeah, it looks like Kevin Sullivan is going to come and play for the Union first team for a while. Um, my guess is they're still going to bring him up to speed at least for this year because he's what fourteen. Uh, yep. You know, <laughs> be a little cruel to put a fourteen-year-old out there on the field with uh, the full MLS side, but you never know. If, uh, if if it proves to be worth doing, I'm sure a curtain can be talked into it. But yeah, Kevin Sullivan. Uh, now a union player and with you know plans to be going abroad in four years to Man City. Congrats to him. That's quite a quite a performance, quite a quite a contract. First yeah. of its kind I've ever heard of. Wow. I've done nothing with my life. No, oh, stop. <laughs> okay. Well, with that um two to draw, um, hopefully that momentum will carry the union going into uh the coming week where they have two games coming up. Uh, this Saturday, May 11th, uh, uh, Orlando is coming to, to Subaru Park. Um, hopefully, 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 um, you know, with the home field advantage and the Union the, Foundation night. 
and it's Union Foundation Night um, that we can handle a fourth place Orlando uh, with ease and confidence, and we get a, a win here. Um, but as Paul should mention, it is um, Foundation Night uh, at the park on Saturday. Uh, we're going to have more on that in just a little bit, um, but it's definitely something you're going to want to check out. And then uh, next Wednesday, uh, New York City FC comes to Subaru Park um, uh, for a 7.30 uh, midweek game, um, which will be yeah, an interesting game. Uh, they're kind of, at least with respect to the table, they're in a similar position as we are. But I feel like we tend to do f- decently against New York City at home. Yeah. Um, well, we tend to do decent against everybody at home for a while there. Hopefully these will be two wins for the Union. Though. Yes, you got, you got to yeah. like their chances. Exactly. exactly. It will be interesting to see what, what whether or not Curtin rotates the roster, since it is a Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday mm-hmm. week for the team. Um, yeah. I would expect to see some rotation, but I also wonder if we're going to start seeing less rotation than we have. And Curtin, I think, is going to look to solidify his starters and then just populate the. Uh, the backups from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, my biggest question is, is who's going to be the center backs? You know, Elliot's been struggling more than I would have expected this year. Mm-hmm. Low and Glessness have been performing well. Is, is that enough to earn them a continued mm-hmm. st- set up as the starters? And Elliot's going to have to fight for that spot. I don't yeah. know. Although Low had a one nervous making little move in the, in the uh, DC does. game. Yeah, Every he's game. still. He's yeah. still working on his baby deer legs, you know, a little shaky. A little sometimes. shaky. Yep. yep. Okay. So this week we have a, a special little treat as we have a, another interview lined up. Um, so we're going to kick it off, hand it over to the interview. So we're incredibly happy to welcome back to the podcast, a very special guest, Alyssa Radu. For those of you who didn't catch our previous interview with Alyssa, uh, Alyssa is the Director of Charitable Programs and Operations with the Philadelphia Union Foundation. Uh, it's an organization that is doing great things for the Chester area and beyond, providing mentoring and educational opportunities for students, promoting mental health and wellness for teenagers, and creating safe spaces and mini soccer pitches for kids. You get plenty of exercise and fun. So thank you for joining us and welcome back to our more Philly Union, Alyssa. Thank you. That was an incredible introduction there. I don't, I don't know. Uh, you kind of hit everything. I don't even know why we have to do a podcast. At this point. <laughs> hit, hit everything the foundation does. Uh, Thank you. It's great to be back. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, and we particularly want to have you back because um, this Saturday, the game coming up uh, the, where the union launched their winning street street comeback. Um, but it's also foundation night uh, for the union and yes. um yeah, we wanted to talk about that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we're excited for it for a lot of, re- you know, obviously to have the team back in town and to have an opportunity to kind of showcase and, and highlight and celebrate, I think is the right to, I think, where we kind of are um, a lot of the things that we have going on. So we're excited for it. It's a lot, too. So it's been it's a lot of good hard work that's um, going to, I think, will be showcased nicely on the night of the game. So what are some of the activities that will be happening the night of the game for, for to you know, like you said, to celebrate Absolutely. what the foundation does? Yeah. So we um, really, um, you know, obviously we have our three initiatives, which is um, the IM Project, Head First, and Chester Soccer. And within Chester Soccer, that's our philanthropic soccer club, and it's called Chester Union. Um, so we're going to do everything we can to kind of make sure we highlight all three of them. But um, we'll have the... I am students will be in attendance. We have our graduating cohort, first graduating cohort um, out of CCSA. So there's about 44 students. Um, so they'll be honored and celebrated at halftime and get a shout out on the field. Wow. Um, Very cool. And they'll be graduating in, in the next couple of weeks from high school and kind of moving on. So we're really excited about that. Mm-hmm. And then um, we have the Chester Union soccer kids, the U12 and U10 teams. Um, they're with the younger ones. They they have they want the young kids to play at halftime. They don't want. I was going to say they're going to play the halftime mighty mites type game. Yeah, so they're going to play on the field, which is real really excited about. Um, and uh, so they'll come out and be able to you know take that in. Um, we're going to kick that off with a tailgate at, at Union Yards, so that'll be fun. We're just kind of a, a you know like a tailgate over um, in the Union Yards, which is a great new space um, for anybody who's not been in the Union game 
I think, what was it, two games ago, I think was when we had a grand opening for that one. Yeah, And something like that. um, just really awesome space that, that now we have as a part of the campus of the union. Um, and you can, you know, eat and drink and play cornhole and do different things. It's still fun. Is And that tailgate open to any anybody coming yeah, down the tailgate to the game? itself is open to everybody, meaning like any fan can go over and the tailgates, um, the tailgate actually stays, it starts from four and it, it closes at 11. So it stays open through the game. So Oh, any wow. fans can go in. Um, and then we at the foundation kind of have our own little space that will kind of be marked off in the boot room, a little reserve. So our board members will get to come together. A lot of our board members are um, season ticket holders, but it gives us a chance to kind of all come together. And, um, and then we will try to think we have Boeing is our presenting sponsor for the foundation night for, for us, right? Like different than Penn medicine, which is the team's um, sponsor for, for foundation night. Um, and, Boeing um, has made a generous donation to us. So there'll be a check presentation at halftime with them, um, some Oh, wow. individuals from them. And Well, that'll be nice. um, we'll be grateful to accept that check. Um, and then let me think we have, so on Union, I mean, on Subaru Plaza, we um, we have recently launched for the May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we uh, have created a pledge campaign called Every Story Matters and what any fans who are interested in kind of making a pledge in person will have a tent on Subaru Plaza, like a foundation, just basically look for the foundation tent. And then you can kind of stand, we have a player coach, uh, parent and fan pledge. Basically you can make your pledge to, you know, create safe spaces for people and, and allow the conversation for mental health. And um, we'll kind of have video, like we're going to kind of do a GoPro and like capture as many as we can, We kind of have a big banner, step and repeat, so players can, I mean, uh, fans can uh, write their name on the pledge, so it's, you know, kind of making their mark. Um, and then last but not least, we're really proud. We've been working on um, a video that we're going to play for the first, well, we're going to play and during the game. It's a headfirst mental health video that we've been fortunate to have Ali Bedoya and Jim Curtin is in it, um, um, Oliver, our goalkeeper. Um, and some other young, some other individuals, and it's just kind of raising them awareness, right? For so, uh, you know, allowing us to use the platform that we have, which is what we always look to do. And then, you know, with the audience of the union fans, and and kind of share that. So we're gonna play that video. I know it's a lot, but that's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it's gonna be a busy night. <laughs> I, know. I know, right? Well, it's been, yeah, it's been a busy, very busy couple of weeks. I up. imagine. Yeah. So a lot of moving parts but we're well, we especially appreciate you taking the time then with <laughs> the yeah. week you must be having hence um, which hence why we had to do it you know later in the evening because she's been busy all day <laughs> thank exactly. you exactly exactly <laughs> for the um uh the i am project that's the the cohort um um right process right. um well i'll speak for me um could you like uh remind us what that has to do with because yeah. i Yeah, yeah that's our mentorship component the mentorship that's we work um directly with the chest the school in chester the ccsa chester mm -hmm. charter scholars academy and um so there's different peer like freshmen they come in they kind of all get exposed to i am project as freshmen and then they kind of apply and as sophomores and then as juniors then they they get to like do learn and explorers and um one of our cohorts that are sophomores they just went and did like They went to one of our board members who's a doctor and he does like, he's a hip surgeon and they got to like go to his profession and learn and like observe a procedure, which is pretty cool. Wow. They went and just did a Boeing. They went to Boeing and watched how they like build helicopters and airplanes. Um, Cool. and so that's like the sophomore class, the junior class gets to go to, um, they spend a week at Newman. So they'll, Mm. so that's like mm -hmm. another cohort, you know what I mean? And then the, the four, the third process is, um, they come in and spend time in our union offices, like in the summer. So like we, it's like an internship, but for high school age. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of then help mentor them. And through all that, we're trying to just kind of guide them and introduce them to things that obviously they would never be able to experience if we had not, you know, offered them the I am project. Yeah. And they um, obviously grow, graduate and go on. So then that's kind of where um, that's, A, call, a celebration basically on May 11th of all of that, like all the things they've gotten to take in as an, as a, and a thank you to them, right? Like let them come to the game and, and celebrate mm -hmm. them. It's a great group or, yeah. you know, they're, we have kids going off to trade school. We have, you know, um, they've all graduated high school. They're all go on to something else. You know, we have 
one of our students is going to Villanova. We have, um, wow. you know, oh. Williamson trade school, which we have about six or seven mm -hmm. going to that. And, yeah. um, and whatever, you know, just different, different things, right. Where you want to support anything that they're looking, if it's, it doesn't have to be a four year, it's just right. help guide them maybe into a job. That's wow. gonna... Yeah. So next that, step. That's a very helpful. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. It's great that they're all, you know, they're all finishing high school and, and, you know, they all made it through the, through the process. Yeah. Uh, that's tremendous. And then, you know, hopefully they're, it leads them, it, it inspires them to seek success later in life and whatever they're doing, like you yeah. were saying. And yeah. this is the first core. core this is our cohort. first graduating. Yeah. So wow. if you think about, you know, I think when last time we came on is that we are, it's, I am project is our most mature initiative, as we kind of say, mm -hmm. meaning like in that way, like I just said, right. these kids have been with us for three, four years. Okay. Um, and now they're, you know, graduating just like yeah. everybody else does, right? You go yeah. through the process. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool for us, just in the evolution of the foundation. Yeah. H how many make up the cohort? There's 44 students, I believe, in that cohort, plus uh, or minus. Maybe don't quote me on the exact. No, it's fine. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and are you finding like, like the next cohorts, like have the numbers increased or is it like? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, um. Yeah, I think because we will be probably closer. There'll be more, and then we do the interviews kind of in. I want to say that was back in February, March. We kind of go through the 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 um, application process, and then. Um, but yeah, we've had more. You know, and a lot of the things they share with us, you know, gives us a chance. Um, kind of just the interview process. I say that in the sense it's just to te use it as a teachable moment. It's not like an intense like we're not. Maybe you know we're not looking to turn kids away if, if, mm -hmm. in a way, but um, wanting them to be able to under, you know, to experience an interview. But we also then say, what, what, it, what made you want to apply for this? Like what made you sign up? And a lot of times they're like the week at the college, that's always the one, you know, cause they get to go <laughs> spend like three or four nights on a college campus. Right. It's pretty oh, cool. Nice. And, yeah. um, and get out of their own home. You know, you think for a high school kid to get away from, you know, sure. their own homes and, sure. and eat and they, and they just love that. That's like the one highlight out of a lot of the things that we, <laughs> You know, I mean, we give MacBooks to the kids that come in. So like, it's not like that was the number one thing they're saying like, <laughs> on a college campus. <laughs> the highlight. Yeah. Experiences make such an impression. So, exactly. Which yeah. is what we're about. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Well, part of it too is like I, I know we asked a bunch of questions last time and yeah, kind of uh, introducing it. I mean, I could give you a little update on some stuff. Yeah, yeah. please. Another that thing that's. So we're really excited for on May 14th, which is Tuesday. So in addition to everything with the May 11th game, um, um, we're holding a forum at the Subaru, like at the stadium. Um, we're going to do it. It's our first annual. It's So Head First has three components. And one of them is um, our in-person education, which is our Happier You. Um, and we've been doing uh, in a Happier You session. So if there's anybody out there who, you know, whose kids are ages 13 to 18 and they want to do in in-person like positive psychology, you know, teaching them how to learn resiliency and how to deal with failure and um, things like that. Then they can just go to our website and they can sign up um, to any of our dates. We have a date, uh, June 2nd, we have a first session. There's a, it's two in-person and one virtual. Um, mm -hmm. And so we welcome anybody who wants to sign up for that. We kind of put about 40 to 60 kids. We try to aim to get 40 to 60 kids in those sessions um, per session. And then the second component is our toolkit, which is online, which is where the, you know, you can just basically have resources. But the third one is our annual forum or is the annual forum. And this is our inaugural one. So we've been working on that for the last month or so. And we're really excited. It's been, it's been really um, remarkable to see the response that we've had from just any, you know, everybody mm -hmm. that we've shared it with. We, we sold out, we aimed, our goal is to have a hundred people um, and we sent an e mass email out and yep. literally within two hours it was sold out. And it was wow. that, to the point where we pushed it to 125. And then, you know, people were like, should we keep more? And I'm like, we can't fit, you know, if anybody's <laughs> in the super bar, we can't fit more than so many in the prime point club. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, you know, we were, we, we were, had to make some dis tough decisions like, okay, should we, should we do an, an afternoon one, you know, whatnot. So essentially we're going to stick to just it's eight to 12 on Tuesday. We have three panelists. We have, and I can share those panelists, but then we're, we'll do another one in a couple of months. Like we, we might end up doing two, two forums if that, if the, you know, the interest is there. So um, we have a panelist of professionals mm -hmm. um, and mostly like 
you know, professionals in positive psychology from PCOM. And then we have some from UPenn, professors from UPenn, authors. Um, we have a representative from IBX, from Independence, our presenting sponsor of that mm-hmm. first. And then we have an executive director from the Quail Foundation. She is the, um, that's a mental health uh, foundation okay. that we were introduced to. And the, our moderator is John Stanley of the Moderati Group, and he's a board member at the Quail Foundation. And so he'll be kind of asking all the questions and um, Ali Bedoya will be fortunate to mm-hmm. have him come during breakfast. And then <laughs> uh, the second panel is mostly parents and players. So youth players, because we want to hear from them and, And the third panel is like coaches. So we have performance, like wellness coaches, um, you know, coaches that help players go through psychology, like, you know, individual psychology performance. And then um, Villanova head coach, a player from Villanova. So we're really excited about it. Mm -hmm. And that's on Tuesday. So that's another one that's been, you know, something we've been planning and working towards. I remember when the email came out and uh, I, I got it too. I don't know if any of you guys got it, but uh, uh, so I was reading up on it and um, <laughs> I sure, you know, it's geared towards, you know, young people and kids. And I'm thinking like, man, I wish I had one for like, if you're over 30. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, hey, maybe um, that, I don't know. That would be kind of veer us off of our mission from like, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's not, but yes, I, I definitely, you know, even coach Curtin says he's like, man, mental health is like, it, yeah. as we say, it doesn't discriminate. Right. It doesn't, no. and it doesn't narrow down to just a 13 year old and not no. a, you know, a 30 year old. But I think um, what we've learned, you know, this, that age, we want to focus on kids obviously as a foundation, sure. but that age yeah. is, um, statistically where we've seen a lot um the the numbers are staggering just globally yeah. for us even as a country so i yeah. think for us to sit in that space it's it, we feel enormous responsibility and mm-hmm. so we're fortunate to be able to bring it together and you know i, I think we'll see how you know i'm excited for it yeah. i'm nervous for it so you yeah. know obviously yeah. trying to bring in but um I think it'll, um, we have a, the other thing I didn't mention, we have a keynote speaker, Julie Kleiman is the author of the mind game. And, um, she's going to share, we have, she's going to do like, you know, speak on, she's written about like Brianna Scurry and other professional Uh athletes that have been out and open about their mental health. So we feel like that, you know, is going to be impactful. And, you know, we've had, you know, obviously we don't know, I didn't ask for ages when people register, you know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. like we wanted, we kind of did the invites we sent it out to different intentionally because we wanted the right people, you know, like we didn't mm-hmm. want it to just be like, Oh, I want to go to Subaru park and get, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. we feel like even if we got a fan like that, then you never know what they might take away. Right. If we sure, do. Right. Right. Sure. And right. that's and so this is kind of like, um, I think we talked about this the last time, right. This is kind of like, it's to help people, you know, uh, you know, mental health is such a broad term, but it's to, right. it's to help people, you know, be aware and how to deal with mental health issues. And it, it does sound like you, you are using kind of a, a sports related forum, but yeah. it's really geared just, it's independent of sports. It's not just, right. you know, you know, how do you, how do you focus for game day? No, it's like, how do you just deal with life in general? Right. It's, right. it's kind of. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have, we call it a mental fitness forum instead mm-hmm. of a mental health forum intentionally. I right. Like that. Because yeah. We want to kind of, it's part of, I think, breaking the stigma down. I mm-hmm. think when, when we have conversation and I was speaking with one of our panelists, Susie, who's from um, um, a a consultant in like positive psychology and applied psychology. And she was like, she was just saying, even the terms we use, we have to be careful, right? Because you hear it says mental health and then that kind of just draws back and has a a different. And so that's something we're even learning, but just from the, you know, like what you were just saying. So a happier you is, our in-person education. It's not saying it's the rewind the tape all the way to like, before you have that, like, I didn't get, you know, the kid who didn't, who gets cut from a team or the kid who doesn't, you know, um, get invited to the cool table at lunch. And then like, Mm -hmm. how do we help teach them how to manage those motions and how to manage those moments before it gets down the line to, you know, your, your bigger terms, your terms like anxiety or depression or, you know, um, in that sense. So that's Mm -hmm. where, I think, you know, we know that there's, that's what the toolkit is for. Like we know that those, mm-hmm. there's a large amount of people, too many that mm-hmm. are, you know, experiencing that anxiety at an extreme level and, and need resources, but, and 
you know, we focus on the athlete part of it, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Like we have, you know, I have a, a number of players that I work with that share different things where they, you know, bullying is an enormous, is a tough, you know, it's tough oh, being on a team, like, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. There's bullying in school, but then from a sport perspective, like, because it's competitive. So you're, it's easy to kind of, yeah. you know, not be maybe complimentary to a teammate when yeah. maybe you should, because you want to maybe tear them down and, and yeah. that might help you, you know, or you might think it might help you perform, yeah. or get, get an edge on them kind of thing. And, um, and so, yeah, I think that's partly where, like I said, we try to rewind the tape and, and yeah. proactively help kids learn the coping mechanisms that will help them. That's, that's going to be great. That's, that's a interesting great too. I, I remember being playing soccer when I was real young, like, you know, first through fourth grade or something like that. And I think it was around fourth grade at that age, you know, 10, 11 years old, you know, some, some of the guys, some of the boys are starting to, you know, hit those growth spurts. Some of us aren't and stuff like that. And you start seeing more daylight between abilities of players on the field. And I still remember like, and I'm, I'm only sharing this because it's kind of like, as I was listening to you talk, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can totally see how that happens where, you know, I was not one of the ones who started getting better at a younger age. I was still, you know, just playing like a, probably just as good as they did in first or second grade. But I remember a couple of the guys on the team, they start getting better. And it was interesting as a result, you know, they don't have the maturity or whatever to realize right. how they fit in in terms of a team. So they would just pass the ball to each other. And I remember being in practices, like I'm open, I'm open. And they would never like pass, you know, because they just wanted to pass to their buddy who right. was that much a better player, you know, you know. I get that a lot as a coach where kids yeah. say that, what you just said. And it yeah. amazes me that I played the game and I would not, ne- I never, the game is so fast. So how do you like go, I'm not going to pass to you and I'm going to yeah. pass to you because I like you yeah. and I don't like, yeah. or you, I don't think you're, you know, that one is, you know, girl, the kids will say that. They'll be like, they don't like me. That's why they don't pass to me. It's or not yeah. more than they'll say like, they don't pass me because I'm not good. Like they won't yeah. say. But, but even that conversation, because I remember I got, I remember it was, it was, it was, it was pretty cold out. And I remember it was getting dark The practice, you know, the sun was setting up later or, or earlier. And uh, I just remember being so upset by the end of this practice. Like at one point, even though we were on the same team, I like intercepted the ball from and just, I just kicked it out because I was so frustrated mm-hmm. that they weren't passing me. And I was, I was upset and it was kind of like, I remember it just soured playing on this team for me. And that was probably one of the last times I played organized soccer for a long time. And it's not because of that, because I was also getting into other stuff, you know, but, yeah. um, but it was like, interesting, like, man, like had like an adult and I'm not, I'm not blaming anybody. This is, this is just yeah. growing up. Right. But it's yeah. like, you know, had an adult with these tools in place, had things might've been different, you know, like, yeah. you know, might've mm-hmm. have been a, a conversation about, you know, fostering unity and teamwork and <clears throat> right. guys, you know, we're, we're only as strong as the weakest link kind of stuff. We all have to work right. together, blah, 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 blah. Right. But um, yeah, because yeah. that's where we find, you know, I, I, I think you explain it exactly how it still plays out even to this day in 2024. Right. I think it's probably sadly even worse. Like, mm. you know, you, um, I, I don't, it's, I, I've been, I hesitate to tell you even some of the things like mm-hmm. when you're, we're in the middle of planning all this, right. And you're just like, well, there's a lot of work to be putting in, but then like, I would, you know, as I mentioned before we started, it's like, I, you know, I train kids still and I'm around players and some of the things that they still share with me, like would make your head spin in the sense of yeah. like the way kids treat other kids in yeah. the way that, um, to the point where what I always, what, what makes me you know, is sad is that then they're quitting because then they're just like, well, I don't want to be on this team. I don't want to be around these people that are making me feel the way they make me feel. And then they, they are just like, I don't need this. And they quit. And those are good players, right? Like those are, right. And we don't want that for our sport, right? Like we Mm -hmm. want as many kids playing the game of soccer as possible. And, um, and that's, you know, it's, you know, I think coaches creating the right environment, like you said, and sharing the right thing. And then, players going like saying the right thing to another person at the right time. Yeah. It's so um, vital, I think in life yeah. and not just, we just use sport, right? Like yeah. we talk soccer and that's our, yeah. our, our, our magnet, but, um, yeah. but yeah. Right. Like it's like anything in any job, right. I'm sure you all hundred percent today could think of an exact <laughs> moment where somebody was like, wow, I really wish you would have said something opposite yeah. of that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see by your smiles. I'll say it's yeah. you're, it's not on camera. <laughs> By your smiles, you agree with what I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. More than when you appreciate so much when yeah. someone does pick you up, right? Like that, it yeah. goes both ways, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think at the end of the day, 
when you talk about like break it down and not make it about mental health and like words that nobody, you know, mm -hmm. thinks it's just like, how do we make people feel comfortable and safe and respected? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's so important. It, it's funny how growing up, I was fortunate to kind of pursue a, you know, you know, decent academics and stuff like that. And, you know, put a lot of effort into books and, and all that. But as I, I later in life, it's kind of, you know, I, I, I got back into soccer and, and other sports and just, you know, have those benefits of being able to participate in those types of activities. And it's, it's um the importance of having like the proper guidance and like sports, academics, all that stuff to kind of provide guidance and perspective, which is, sounds exactly like what's happening here but like you know you learn so many l valuable life skills from you know you know mental pursuits of course but even the physical how like you know that when you push yourself you know to 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 like achieve these physical goals or these you know overcome these challenges and improve and all that it's like that just bleeds into all other aspects of life too you know it's just like um, you know, I know how hard it is to train for, I don't know, like, I, I haven't done a half marathon, but, you know, training for a half marathon and then you're staring at your stack of receipts and everything to file your income taxes. Like, I right, just got to, you know, power yeah. through this, you know, but, uh, right. Yeah, and I think a... that's where we try. I mean, I think that's what, from a foundation perspective with all of our, not even, you know, just in head first from a mental part, but just from like, like you said, like with, I am where we had these students from Villanova, they were a consulting class and they did a presentation with us. And we, we made a connection with, as I mentioned, the one student in our IM project that, um, Amani, who is going to Villanova. And so like, we gave him a tour of the stadium and, and before they presented and, and then we had her come so she could meet them. So like, it's something as simple, like if we didn't have the IM project, right. Or you think about if we didn't have the funding and the donations that, that people so generously give us, then that, Amani's mm -hmm. is we made a connection for her with one of the students in that class this mm -hmm. young girl's a junior and so like she's gonna leave you know Chester and go to you know Villanova and then she's gonna have already one friend at least if you want to see and that simple yeah. is that like you're saying like yeah. this, those things that are gonna help you kind of get through or like you know I was on the phone with our one of our coaches for Chester Union and like the two two kids were fighting to be honest they were literally like fighting mm -hmm. in it, you know and we were discussing you know, like working through that and handling it and I was just like you know like and she even said, she was like, look, this, she goes, he's no, this person's never had any issues. Like we, there was no prior. It was just kind of like against the grain of like when they'd been at practice. And she was like, I kind of feel like something was maybe going on at home, like, or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the mom kind of confirmed that and whatnot. And then like, but it was just, we putting them in a sporting environment. Right. So then to teach that kid how to deal with the conflict mm -hmm. was then ultimately. And if you kind of same thing with, I am, if you take that away for that kid, then where are they getting it from? Right. Yeah, or right. like, what are, yeah, yeah. Where, you know, we're filling, we, like I said, we feel a responsibility to fill that because that's, you know, ultimately that hopefully we can teach them not just to kick a ball and dribble a ball, but we can teach them how to handle conflict. Right. And absolutely. And, shake hands after a game that you played so hard for and you gave so much to, and then, you know, you have good sportsmanship. Right. And mm -hmm. I think those are all the things that sport gives us. And for yeah. us, the foundation is like, we're trying to give that to kids in Chester, right. Or, or anyone, you know, who is looking for mental, you know, fitness development, right. That's kind of what's cool about it. All. Yeah. I do have another question. I, I don't want to fall on Christy. I don't want to keep. Nope. Please. Yeah. Um, this is kind of in my wheelhouse a little bit, but um, <laughs> feel free to be like, ah, let's put the, we'll, we'll table this for now. So with this first court cohort coming through, so they've been with the the program for about four years, I think you said three, four years. Yeah. So then they were freshmen. They, every student we do like, if, um, what do you call it? I don't think the word's not coming to you. Do like a field trip. We do a field mm -hmm. trip and they do a um, assembly. So okay. everybody in the school, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, experience it. So okay. they're introduced to it as a freshman. So we kind of, if you think yeah. about it that way, yeah. So then now they're seniors, so four years. So, I mean, both for the the, the cohort and the IM project and, well, just even like the um, all the other programs yeah. as well. Like, so what kind of challenges did a global pandemic <laughs> introduce oh. for this kind of stuff? Cause... Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's a great question because I think I'll – speak to the first two first, meaning like the Chester soccer side of stuff yeah. and then the mm -hmm. I am side of it. I think what we do right for us to be able to like do 
offer I am and whatnot, we have to rely on like technology, right? So that's yeah. one. And a lot of that, um, you know, it presents its challenges in an area where maybe these kids don't have internet at home and things of that nature. Yeah. So like that, when you talk about like, but they were introduced to it, right? So I think if like yeah. you would have gone into an underserved area and said like, we want to bring these great programs to you, they might not have been able to um, really take it in and appreciate it because there would have been that wall of restriction, like the challenge of of um, limitation on if it's internet or things mm -hmm. of that nature. Um, I like, think did you guys like, were you guys able to help in that aspect or, or at least? I, I mean, I wasn't, a, I didn't work at the foundation right. Yeah. then. Right. So yeah. I've only been there for a year, yeah. but I can, but um, I would say, no, I mean, I think where the program, like where the foundation was at that time, the foundation kind of blossomed during the pandemic from because wow. the community side of things was really all that people could do. Right. Like yeah. you mean, yeah. like could the, could the union and the staff and whatnot go and like help, um, give out PPE to people, right? Like those mm -hmm. kind of, so like, that's how that like kind of flourished during that time. And then when you, when we got to the point where it was back to like being around the kids, I think, you know, we, um, yeah, just simple Google, like forms and filling out things in that nature, they had to be introduced to it during the pandemic. So mm -hmm. like we were, were the recipients of being able to like use that, which connects us to them easier, yeah. right? Like yeah. social media, things of that nature through online. Um, that I think if the pandemic, you know, I guess we know a lot about what didn't was bad about it, but what yeah. was good was that yeah. it, like I said, it it allowed, it forced everyone's learning curve to change. I think, and mm -hmm. that we are a recipient of that as yeah. in all three of our initiatives. Um, we talk a lot about it, and that came out, and I've been posing that question to a lot of the professionals lately, and even young people when I have conversations because this six this generation that's like six seventh. I'm reading a great book. It's called The Anxious Generation. And the, yeah. the author kind of goes into like needing to be active, right? Like doing things and like not being connected to your device and things of that nature. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, if we didn't have, my question to the professionals, like if we didn't have the pandemic, would we still have this high level of anxiety that so many people, you know, like Interesting. One of, Susie shared with me this stat, I guess the World Health Organization, or there's like an annual report that comes out globally about um, mental health around the world. And the U S is normally, we're normally one of the top 10 happiest countries in the mm -hmm. world. And what they did for the first time in March was they, um, and I hope I get this right. So when she told me to, they actually broke it down by ages. Like, so normally they just say like, um, United States is number nine. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't know who else she didn't, I don't know who else is ahead of us. And, and, but this time they broke it down. So like where we, we rank the highest is like actually like in the demographic, like 50, 60s and older, but where we are not at all is that 13, 14. She said, it's like the worst, most staggering statistics at that particular age. Wow. And then I kind of posed the same question you said, I was like, well, is that, is that the pandemic? Is that like yeah. our society? I think it's all, all of it. I, I think if you really kept it simple or that's my opinion, yeah. you know, like I think it's your social media use it, you know, your, your devices, combined with society, right? Mm -hmm. Like where we are as a country and where we are, you know, whatnot, mm -hmm. um, the challenges we face with, within the division of our country. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I think in the pandemic, right? Like, I think that was where, but it's definitely, when you say those coping mechanisms that like, we're trying to teach a kid is like, well, if they weren't having, they had kids lost a lot during those periods yeah. of time, yeah. mm -hmm. critical times of their development, yeah. Yeah. both cerebrally roast, like, I call it athletic maturity a lot. Like what mm -hmm. you said, like having the athletic maturity to be like, you are one of the best, you're coming to the team. I don't feel threatened by you. I feel mm -hmm. like you're an asset to the team. And it's like yeah. athletic maturity, right? Or mm -hmm. how do you lose a big game and then channel that back into the mm -hmm. next one and rebound? I mean, you're right. It could probably get me going. Like long, <laughs> but I'll, I'll pause in that sense and let you yeah, know that's another question of it. Well, I was just thinking that's this first cohort and it's kind of like, you know, in many ways, they are setting the bar, they're setting the standard, and what a crucible to come through as well, right? Just right. not only is it just just getting through high school and all that stuff, it's like there was a lot going on in the world that affected everything down to, you know, what was happening down the street. And right. um, it, it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how, you know, as the years go by and every cohort. Right. I think we on, won't really know all of that, yeah. right? Until they're all, you know, yeah. I don't um, but yeah, I don't, I mean, you know, I think it's important to, 
share and if, and look at like what we need to be better at. So then we can sculpt and create in something that can be positive and be better for it. And that's what we try to do with the foundation and do with all three of our initiatives. Right. Because, you know, and that's something even like as with our forum, um, we've been trying to be as intentional because we know it's a tough topic. These are tough, you know, this mm -hmm. isn't when you talk about mental fitness and things of that nature. And then, and then how do you talk about it? And then how do you not make people, you know, and then leave a message of hope, right? Like, cause that's important. I think yeah. that the only way that you feel like you have a path forward and, um, and I think that for us, we're doing the best we can to navigate that message is, you know what I mean? But I think we're excited for I am students because I definitely can say, uh, you know, publicly that like we feel very strong that those kids are walking away with an opportunity, an experience that they would have never had if, if we had not existed. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's mm -hmm. um, without a doubt. And that it, whatever it might be, even if you just took one small component, like I said, if we just took a group of 40 kids to a college a week, um, you know, yeah. we just did that, not took them, you know, and had them have experienced two or three inspirational speakers or not had them come and be interns in the, in the front office of the union, like pay them, you know, and taught them what it's like to be in a professional setting. Like any one of those would have been life yeah. could be life changing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, it's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very cool. Yeah. So the, the, the mental fitness forum, uh, which is uh, coming up, I guess, is next week, I think you said, right? Tuesday, yeah, a week mm -hmm. from today. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys are hoping to make this an, an annual thing? Yeah, so that's part of, yeah, we're, um, we were intentional about doing it in May because it's Mental Health Awareness mm -hmm. Month. So that's where I think um, if we expand it, we'll see. But it, it, you know, every, if this year you can't make it and you want to, you know, check it out next year, then I would, aim to kind of plan for it to be next May as well. Right. Okay. But there's a, if you keep looking at our website, there might be, we might post one and do one in October. There's world mental health day, which is like, I think October 10th, I think it's when we launched at first. Okay. So that was, um, so that's another good opportunity to kind of, you know, maybe do two of them and we'll see. I mean, yeah. we can always do virtual, you know, there's a lot of, the sky's the limit. We can do yeah. a lot of things, yeah. right. Absolutely. We can do just like, players and coaches, you know, I think that's the part where we were like, we wanted to keep it so that people would have a chance to really like speak. But then it was just, we were so fortunate to have some great people that we didn't want to, we wanted to fit it all in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's undertakings like this that are very uh, uh, inspiring. And it kind of reminds us, you know, the best way to get something done is just get started, you know, in a sense mm -hmm. of, you know, do your best, but uh, Christy, I, I hears me say this all the time, you know, don't let perfection stop you from getting started, you know, like, right. you know, um, right. so exactly. wow. we've had to remind ourselves of that a little, cause I was like, should we do, you know, and then internally it was like, no, let's just make sure, make it the best, you know, eight, you know, three hours that we can do instead of trying to like pivot too late. Right. Cause then I feel yeah. like we, right. And that was progress over perfection. There you go. That's, you that's go. a better way to say it. So just to kind of sum up for this weekend then. So you guys are going to be at the, uh, gosh, what's called the Union, um, Union, Yards. Union Yards. Union Yards. And that's going to be like before and after the game. Or, well, or We're going to be uh, there before the game. Yeah. But the the okay. fans can go. I was just okay. offering that. Yeah. Before. But if you, what I would suggest is if you want to get involved with the foundation or do, you can either go on the site and make your pledge online, or you can mm -hmm. come out on Subaru Plaza during before the game and uh, make your pledge in person and kind of, you know, put a voice to um, sh and share your story just with your voice by, um, you know, joining our pledge campaign. That would be, and you can do that at, we'll be doing that for um, all three games in May, all three home games in the month of May for mental oh, health. Oh, awesome. Oh, cool. So if you can't do Saturdays, you're not there. You come to the next two, May 15th or May 29th. We'd love to see you. Um, and then, or like I said, if you're not able to make it to the game, then you can do it. Go to our website um, and just click through. It's on the homepage there. And click on Every Story Matters and get involved. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, as part of celebrating the foundation, we ran a uh, 
it's a bit of a, I guess, contest raffle um, for our listeners, asking them to make donations to the foundation. And for every dollar they donated, they got an entry into a contest our to raffle. our raffle to win <laughs> um, two tickets and a parking pass for foundation night. Yeah. Um, so uh, we would like to announce that Nate of KOP is our official winner. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> Um, yeah, just in case yeah, anybody yeah, thinks yeah. there's anything yeah. uh, inside about this, this is not Paul's son, Nate. This is a different <laughs> Nate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. um, but thank you so much, Nate, uh, for participating. Yeah. And all who participated, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate it. And um, yeah, so Nate will be at Foundation Night. Yeah. Well, that would be awesome. Hopefully it's yeah. his <laughs> first time going to the game and then he gets to be a forever fan, right? You just need one that kind of gets Yeah, I'm not sure if it's his first stop. time, yeah. but um, but uh, it's we appreciate it nonetheless. So. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That is so awesome. That That's was, awesome. That was very cool. Yeah. yeah. Very Nate cool. pops up a lot on our, our posting, so it's... Uh, um, so, we appreciate yeah, him. Yeah, thanks. So, yes. Yeah, thank I you. Think a long-time listener, I like to think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I was, um, I probably, I mean, uh, I can add to that if we would love to invite Nate to our union yards and invite the three of you guys out to the our tailgate for the foundation. I can, uh, get you, uh, you know, get you a, bra- a bracelet. You just have to come and basically just look for the foundation flag and then I'll, we'll be there to check you in. So I'll make sure him. And if you tell me his name too, just to make sure I have it and then right. I'll, is it two tickets or is it one? Like, is it two, it's one, two tickets? One t- two tickets. Two tickets? Yeah. yeah. So whatever him and his guests will be able to happy to have them add to the experience. All well, right. thank you so much. Thank you so much. That. Thank you. Yeah. I will say the one thing I forgot to mention, which is yeah. probably the one thing that fans probably wanted to hear more than anything I had to say, but um, the, so we're doing an auction. We do auctions as I think you might know, mm-hmm. like for the foundation, like throughout different games. And um, so we, our auction will go live tomorrow at 12. And the auction will run for like four or five days. So it'll go past the game. But um, the items we have. So one of the other, and I guess now it just came to me. I totally, one of the coolest things that's going on <laughs> on foundation night. Um, I guess I probably should pause. You might have to edit this and put it back when I give you my list. But um, <laughs> we're really fortunate that the MLS is allowing, we have our head first logo will be on the uniforms of all the players um, oh, cool. on the night. And you know, so obviously it's aired on Apple. So globally, head, the Fed head first logo will be on every uniform. Um, so we're really proud of that. And so within tied into that, we are fortunate that the um, we will the foundation will have every jersey worn by the players will be gifted back to the foundation. So we're going to auction off four or five of those. So like oh, Carranza's wow. jersey, but you know, um, um, McGlynn's jersey, solo, you know, whatever will. Yeah. Um, and then so you can bid on that jersey. So it'll be a worn Philadelphia Union player <laughs> jersey with the head first logo. So it'll be like a one of a kind because there wow. will be, you know, wow. another wow. game. Um, so those those will be bid. I mean, those will be one of our auction items. And then we have one of a really great photographer donated um five signed images, like took some really beautiful signed action photos. We had a bunch that we um we auctioned off for our, at our gala. Um and so it's just like, you know, an action photo that he took and then it's signed by the player. So we have like oh, cool. six of those. Oh, cool. And then we have, I think we're going to do two signed ball, like the whole team signed ball. So oh, the wow. whole 2024 roster signed. Oh, um, and so that'll be an auction if you want to support the foundation, anything that that I've shared that's yeah. inspired you. We'd love to um, see you, give you a chance to, to be the last bid, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely... Uh that out with the podcast so people yeah. know that too to it'll get it. like it'll be on social too like it'll okay. you can even just retweet it and stuff or x whatever the term is yeah. re-exit I guess, or instagram <laughs> instagram it'll be on instagram yeah. you can share and whatnot but i feel like my mom is going to be going through her couch cushions to try to find a uh, change to bid on Carranza's jersey yeah. she's a fan <laughs> <laughs> she's a popular one yeah she's i imagine one. that's gonna be an expensive one <laughs> mother's day is coming up so yeah, i know that's, that's, true. Where I'm hoping, that's true right yeah you're gonna have like uh, yeah it might be wrong hopefully it's 
women that are fans of the union, not just like a dad who's like, I just wanted this jersey. I bought it for you and just said it was for Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like, when they just wanted it. Yeah. Like when Homer got Marge a bowling ball for Christmas. Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be cool. And it, we're excited for it. Hopefully we've, we'll see if they can give us a shout out on Apple with the announcers. We can, yeah, that'd be sweet. That would be really yeah, cool nice. draw yeah. some attention to it. So we're really excited. Man, you guys have so much going on. Yeah. <laughs> That's why she has yeah. that vacation schedule. <laughs> yeah. Yep. She's going to need it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, Alyssa, thank you so much for coming back onto the podcast. Um, I know we, we really enjoy having you on. Um, and, uh, man, again, it just sounds like the, the foundation is just rolling out more and more stuff. And it's just always great to, to touch base and see what you guys are up to. And, just be amazed at everything you guys are doing. So, yeah. um, thank you. Thank we you appreciate so much. it. Yes. No, I, we appreciate you, you know, giving us the opportunity to share it and appreciate you guys being fans one and just supporting what we do. Cause you know, it's, we're all kind of in this together. So we're, it's all good. Yeah. And, and I, um, I was happy to jump on and I appreciate that you gave me another opportunity. I was grateful for the first time. And then <laughs> when I saw the next one, I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Okay. If you want to reach out to us, you can reach us at our website, amorephillyunion.com. Uh, definitely email us. Uh, keep those emails coming. Um, we are pod at amorephillyunion.com. Uh, on the socials, uh, Twitter, we are amorephillyu. Instagram, YouTube, and threads, we are amorephillyunion. Our ever-growing and awesome Spotify playlist is out there for you to check out. Um, we are amorephillyunion. Um uh, but make sure it's the um, playlist, although also the podcast too. And with that, get our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Um, you know, we're on all of them. So keep downloading us, uh, listening, uh, like, subscribe, spread the word, all that good stuff. So thanks everyone for tuning into another episode of A More Philly Union. We are your hosts. I'm E. I'm C. I'm Paul. And I'm Melissa. Go. Go. Yeah. Be who you are. That's my yeah. Right. That's yeah. that's all we got. <laughs> <laughs>